Welcome to Electro Online. In this case, we have a bar that's made up of three different metals, a 12 centimeter long section of brass, an 18 centimeter long section of copper, and a 24 centimeter long section of aluminum. Hmm. The temperature on one side, let's say over here, is 100 centigrade degrees or degrees centigrade, and the temperature on this side is zero degrees centigrade. And let's assume there's no heat loss to the sides, heat flows through the three bars, and we're trying to find the temperature at junction one and the temperature at junction two. That's what we're after. So how do we do that? Well, we first need to find the heat flow through the combination of brass, copper, and aluminum. So what we can say here is that Q dot is equal to the difference in the temperature, and notice that at the numerator we simply have the difference of the total difference in temperature. In the denominator we have the sum of the heat resistances of the three sections. So in that case it's going to be X1 divided by K1 times A plus X2 divided by K2 times A plus X3 divided by K3 times A. And notice that X1, X2, X3 are the length of each of the three sections. So plugging in the numbers, we can get Q dot is equal to a total of 100 divided by X1 is 0 0.12 divided by uh, K, the first K was 109. And of course, the cross section area of 2.3 centimeters squared need to be converted to meters squared. So that's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4, like so. Eh, I don't need these. Get rid of that. Like that. That would be better. All right. Now the other two, we need to make this a whole lot longer. So it will be plus 0 0.18 divided by 385, and the same cross-sectional area of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4. And let's see, barely enough room for the last one, so that would be plus uh, 0 0.24 divided by 205 and 2.33 times 10 to the minus 4. That's a terrible looking 3. There we go. Numbers are a little bit small, and you can barely see the negative 4. There we go. All right. So that's the 3 heat resistances of the three materials. So now we can get Q dot. The total heat flow is going to be, all right, so we have 0.12 divided by 109 divided by 2.3 e to the 4 minus equals plus 0.18 divided by 385 divided by 2.3 e to the 4 minus equals plus 0.24 divided by 205, divided by 2.3 e to the 4 minus, equals, take that to the numerator, and multiply that times 100, and we get 8.4 watts. So Q dot is 8.4 watts, which is the heat flow through that combination. Okay, now that we have the heat flow, we should now be able to determine what the delta T is over here, and the delta T over there. So, we can say that Q dot is equal to delta T1 divided by, and we're going to just take this portion right here, which is X1 divided by K1 times the cross-sectional area, which means that delta T1 is equal to Q dot times X1 divided by K1 times A. All right. Q1, we already have that, that's 8.4 watts. X1, which is going to be 0 0.12. And there's our puppy again, playing with ping pong balls. So we'll try to ignore that. K1, 109. And the cross-sectional area, that's going to be equal to 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4. All right, so delta T1 is equal to... 8.4 times 0.12 divided by 109 divided by 2.3 e to the 4 minus equals, and we get 40.2 degrees. So delta T1 is 40.2 degrees, which means that the temperature at the junction T1 is equal to the initial temperature of 100 degrees centigrade minus delta T1, which is 100 degrees centigrade minus 40. 
0.2 centigrade degrees or T1 is equal to 59.8 degrees centigrade. So now we have the junction between the brass and the copper. So now we need the junction between the copper and the aluminum. So now we have delta T2 is equal to, and we can use the same equation, Q dot X2 divided by K2 times the cross-sectional area, which is still 8.4 because that's a constant Q through the entire length of the bar, times 0 0.18, the length of the second section, K2 is 385, and the cross-sectional area 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so delta T2 is equal to 8.4 times 0.18 divided by 385 divided by 2.3 e to the 4 minus equals 17.1, close enough, 17.1 centigrade degrees. So therefore, T2 is equal to T1 minus delta T2, which is equal to 59.8 degrees centigrade minus 17.1 centigrade degrees, which is equal to, looks like, 42.7 42.7 degrees centigrade. That's the temperature at junction 2, and that's the temperature at junction 1. And that is how it's done.